This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, adventure, and sci-fi film called Pitch Black 2 The Chronicles of Riddick. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. A galactic army known as Necromongers crusades across the cosmos for the promised land of dark new worlds called the Underverse. Leading them is Lord Marshall, who came out stronger after returning from the Underverse. The Necromongers destroy and invade, raining havoc across the universe. At UV System Planet 6, Riddick runs from mercenaries led by Tombs. Riddick leads them into the cave and slays them one by one in the darkness. With Tombs' henchmen defeated, Riddick interrogates Tombs on who hired him. Tombs says he was hired anonymously, but adds that he was hired from planet Helion Prime. Riddick throws Tombs out and flies the ship to Helion Prime. During his journey, Riddick laments that no one can be trusted, even a holy man whom he saved and considered a friend. At planet Crematoria, mercenaries push a steel box and force the woman inside into a cage. The woman attempts to resist, but eventually goes in. She screams in frustration over the growling beasts in the other cages. In a sleep, Riddick sees a vision of a woman claiming that he'll soon remember what happened in Furia. He jolts awake when the ship quakes and sounds its warning. Another ship instructs him to follow him for security inspections, but Riddick fights him and escapes. Imam walks down the street on Helion Prime and sees the people's anxiety over the necromonger's impending arrival. He goes home to find Riddick, who figured that Imam gave his location to the mercenaries since he only told Imam where he was heading. Imam defends that he wouldn't have betrayed Riddick if not for the impending invasion. Riddick stops his aggression when he notices Imam's daughter, Ziza. Ziza is fascinated by Riddick, given Imam's stories of how he saved his life, but her mother Layun ushers her to safety. Riddick then asks Imam who placed the bounty on his head. Later, Imam shares his worries that the universe around them is falling and soon it'll be Helion Prime's turn, but Riddick dismisses it unemotionally. A while later, hooded figures arrive, along with Irian, the elemental race's envoy. She confesses to setting up the bounty, having done so in hopes that Riddick would help them fight the necromongers. Imam recounts Irian's story about the Furian male babies who were killed, which reminded him of Riddick. They then interrogate Riddick about his origins, but are interrupted when guards beat on the door, searching for him. Imam begs Riddick's help in fighting the invaders, but Riddick refuses. He's about to leave when Imam accuses him of leaving a girl to her fate. After pulling Imam and his family out of their home, the guards break in and find Riddick with his back to them. Riddick extinguishes the candles, rendering the room in total darkness. The guards open fire, but Riddick subdues them effortlessly. When the remaining guard flees in terror, Riddick inquires about the girl. Imam recounts that the girl Jack was looking for him, but she was imprisoned in crematoria. Imam warns him that Jack, who saw Riddick as an older brother, never forgave him for deserting her. Riddick clarifies that all of them should have stayed away from him before leaving. Just then, necromongers arrive and conquer Helion Prime as Riddick watches the wreckage. Imam, his family, and the other citizens flee to safety. Helion soldiers engage in the necromongers' planes in battle, but more necromongers descend to the ground. During this, Imam tells his family to hide while he checks on the safe path. Imam calls on them but the soldier and the necromongers block their way. He tries to jump amidst the battle, but Riddick pulls him to safety. A soldier shoots a necromonger, but as he drops, the necromonger spins a spear and launches an orb of light into the sky, which annihilates the area below it. When the dust settles, Riddick offers to take Imam and his family out of the planet, but Imam intends to take his family to a shelter instead. Riddick guides Imam and his family to safety, but hides when a swarm of wandering necromongers searches for survivors through heat signatures. Imam runs away to divert the necromonger's attention, but gets pursued by a warrior named Irgun. When cornered, Imam presents himself to Irgun, confident about his fate in the afterlife. Riddick rushes to search for Imam and sees his necklace in a pool of blood. Riddick retrieves it and discovers Imam's broken body below. The morning after, Lord Marshal marches to his new conquered land, anticipating a replenishment of necromongers. Commander Vako watches on as his wife, Dame Vako, saunters as she delights in the planet's downfall. Vako reprimands her of her place in their people, and she confidently states that her place is at his side. Facing the Helion survivors, the Purifier declares how humans of various races in the universe are an unguided mistake, and the Necromongers intend to correct this mistake. He urges them to convert to be welcomed in the paradise called Underverse. Irgun strolls in with a blade stuck on his back. Lord Marshall points at his vast army, declaring they were once like them, but converted. The people refuse, so the purifier shares he was once in denial, but changed and urges them to kneel for purification. 
A man declares their worlds are full of religions, and the people cannot be forced to convert. In response, the Lord Marshal steals a soul. As they witness the display of power, the crowd kneels. Amongst the crowd, Riddick remains standing and reveals himself. Vako commands him to kneel, but Riddick denies and demands to fight Irgun, Imam's killer. Vako concedes, and Irgun confidently faces Riddick. Riddick quickly slays Irgun using the blade on his back. Fascinated, Lord Marshal approaches Riddick and offers him the blade he used to slay Irgun. He then orders Riddick to the quasi-deads, the half-dead telepaths. Dame flirtatiously volunteers to guide him. When they arrive at the necropolis, Dame leads him to the center and leaves. As the quasi-deads roll down from their chambers, they scan his memories of Jack, Irion, and Imam. As they finally declare him a Furion, the Lord Marshal orders his men to destroy Riddick. Riddick escapes effortlessly, but is captured by Toombs' crew, who found him through his stolen ships as locator. On the ship, Toombs wonders who will pay the most for Riddick. Riddick deliberately rules out the other prisons and entices Toombs to sell him to the Crematoria prison. In the Necromonger's Armada, Vako approaches Lord Marshal with a hostile demeanor but halts when he turns abruptly. He reports on Riddick's trail, which Lord Marshal orders him to follow. Vako protests the idea of taking a warship to find one man, but the Lord Marshal insists. In their room, Dame implies that the Lord Marshal is merely half the warrior Vako is, hinting that Vako should lead instead. Vako hits her for conspiring and claims that the Lord Marshal sees everything. Dame changes tactics and seduces him as she murmurs his worth for the throne. By the throne, they see Lord Marshal demanding Irian for Riddick's whereabouts. Vako recognizes Irian as a captive, but Dame comments that the Lord Marshal isn't treating her as such. Dame urges Vako to follow his orders while she investigates why Riddick threatens Lord Marshal. Just then, Toombs' ship arrives in Crematoria and descends in turbulence, eventually colliding into a cave. Toombs leads a chained Riddick down the prison, where Riddick kills one of his crew. Toombs laughs, since there's one less person to share the profit with. They finally land and are greeted by the Warden. Riddick is rolled down the prison as Toombs settles their payout with the Warden, who offers a lower price because his guard, Anatoly, views Riddick as trouble. As Riddick reaches the bottom of the prison, he expertly frees himself and subdues a worker. Another inmate moves to attack him, but gets thrown back by chains. He removes his goggles when he sees a woman holding the chains but gets sidetracked as Gov approaches. Gov narrates how a convict knows respect, but an inmate will betray his fellows. Gov asks which one is Riddick, but he answers that he's just passing through. Riddick leaves to find the woman, but she ambushes him. Riddick easily subdues her and addresses her as Jack. She claims that Jack's dead, then cuts Riddick with a blade in her mouth. She introduces herself as Kira, then jumps over the railing. In their ship to locate Riddick, the Purifier approaches Vako and claims their mission might be a test of their beliefs. Vako is enraged that the Purifier is testing his loyalty, but he clarifies that it isn't why he's with him. Back in the Armada, Dame interrogates Irion on Riddick's origins. Irion reveals a prophecy of a young warrior's downfall by a male Furion. Dame shares to Vako about the warrior's annihilation of male Furions to prevent the prophecy. They deduce that the warrior is Lord Marshal and Riddick is his demise. Dame orders Vako to kill Riddick to prove his loyalty and be given an opportunity to revolt. Vako leaves, unaware that the Purifier heard their plans. Back at the crematoria, the guards let several growling beasts loose, and Gov warns Riddick not to make eye contact with them. Kira expertly dodges a beast while the others flee for safety, barricading themselves behind steel bars. Some prisoners who fail to hide get attacked and killed. When a beast emerges from behind the waterfalls, Riddick makes eye contact with it, despite being told not to. After a while, Gov notices Riddick caressing the beast like a pet. Just then, the guards capture Kira and check her for hidden weapons. The guard frisking her starts touching her suggestively, so Kira fights back but she's eventually outnumbered. Riddick appears but the guards dismiss him. One guard attacks and Riddick slays him with a teacup. Seeing what he can do, the other guards run. Kira and Riddick get into a heated argument as Kira reveals that she fraternized with the mercenaries, hoping to learn the trade, but ended up enslaved. Riddick reminds her that he told her to stay in New Mecca while he hid to keep the mercenaries away from her, yet she went to them anyway. Before walking away, Kira justifies that she had no one else around. A while later, the guards open the chamber to introduce fresh air inside, and Riddick takes notice. Beside him, Gov questions his identity, but Riddick instead relays his escape plan and offers Gov to join him. Above the prison, the warden offers Tombs their final price for Riddick. Tombs is satisfied, but the atmosphere turns tense when the Warden reveals that a necromonger's ship is heading there. Tombs defends that he made sure they lost the ship, but the Warden berates him for stealing a prisoner from the necromongers. 
The confrontation ensues a gunfight between them, and Toom slides down the rope to escape. When the gunfight above grows quiet, Riddick climbs on the rope and sees the image of the approaching necromonger ship. He opens the cages below and approaches the exit, but finds it stuck. Gov and the other prisoners arrive, but Riddick reveals that the guards already emptied their bank, escaped, and barred the door so no one could follow. He adds that he was planning to do the same. Before escaping, Riddick locks Thooms in a cage amongst the beasts. He raises the guard's platform to the surface, but the other inmates are concerned about the sun's deadly rays. Gov deduces that they can stay under the night before the sun rises and make it to the hangar to leave the planet. The guards spot Riddick and his companions outside and realize they're going in the ship's direction. Anatoly draws his weapon and focuses on the fleeing inmates but stops when he doesn't see Riddick. Above him, Riddick swings his weapon, instantly incapacitating Anatoly. The two groups exchange fire until the guards are forced to close their hideout to recover. The inmates rush to the stone mountain, but before they can reach the top, the sun searing heat closes in, forcing them to hide behind the stones. Kira fails to catch up and gets stuck in a corner exposed to the sun. Riddick swings on a rope to grab Kira and lands on the shadow before the fire reaches them. They reach the summit just as the necromonger ship arrives. The necromongers wait at the prisoner's entrance when it opens, revealing the guards. The guards open fire just as Riddick comes flying at the necromongers. Amidst the battle, Vako shoots Riddick, incapacitating him. Kira throws herself at Vako, making him lose his balance and weapon, which lands within Gov's reach. Gov attempts to grab it, but Vako kills him. Riddick kneels as Vako slowly approaches and holds him at gunpoint. The woman in his vision suddenly appears and plants a hand to his chest to restore his memory of Furion's destruction. Riddick's body convulses, and as Lord Marshall's face appears in his memory, he lets out a sudden blast of power, knocking out the necromongers. The sun's blazing fire flares once again, just as the necromonger ship flies over them. Vako and the others run to their ship, and with one last glance at Riddick, Kira follows them, believing that Riddick is dead. Riddick regains consciousness just as the necromonger ship sails away. He turns abruptly when the purifier approaches him, relaying the Lord Marshal's message to stay away in exchange for not being hunted anymore. The purifier adds that Vakal will report him dead, creating an opportunity for a stealth attack. Riddick grabs the purifier, demanding where Kira is. Instead, the purifier reveals he's a Furion as well. He regrets the wickedness he committed in the name of a faith that was never his and warns that Kira will suffer the same fate. Hoping that Riddick will end the Lord Marshal, the purifier walks towards the sun's deadly fire. In Helion Prime, the Lord Marshal commends Vako's accomplishments. When the Lord Marshal exits, Vako regrets not bringing Riddick's body, wondering if he survived. Dame insists that they can't doubt if he succeeded, not when the Lord Marshal already believes him. The Lord Marshal then goes to Erion and asks her to confirm that Riddick is dead. He turns away in satisfaction when Erion says he will soon reach the Underverse, failing to see Erion's mysterious smile behind him. The Lord Marshal orders his army to depart from the planet. Dame sees the armada leaving when someone bumps into her. As their ship closes, Dame searches through the crowd and sees silver eyes behind an armored headgear. Dame reports to Vako that Riddick is alive and in their ship, criticizing him for his failure. When Vako attempts to alert the Lord Marshal, Dame proposes letting Riddick create an opportunity for him to end the Lord Marshal. When Vako refuses to slay his leader, Dame points out that the Lord Marshal is afraid, therefore he's weak. She insists that they end him for the sake of the necromongers because the Lord Marshal is no longer fit to lead. This convinces Vako. With the armada off the ground, Lord Marshal declares the final protocol to stand by for his orders. Lyun and the other survivors of Helion Prime look up and see a blue orb of light launching into the sky. Inside the ship, a necromonger senses Riddick's presence. Later, the same necromonger's dead body is brought to Lord Marshal, where they see his last sighting of Riddick. Lord Marshal orders Commander Toll to capture him. The Lord Marshal prepares his whip as the necromongers assemble around the throne room. Commander Towel searches the ship while Riddick slips into the quasi-dead's chamber. He positions himself beyond the throne room's door, just as two necromongers stand on guard. Riddick stabs them and comes flying at the Lord Marshal but stumbles when he evades. The Lord Marshal orders his guards to stand down. Then Riddick stills when he presents a glaze-eyed Kara, converted as a necromonger. The Lord Marshal urges Riddick to be converted to avoid death and arise in the Underverse. Kira promises Riddick that the conversion will cleanse their pain, and they'll see the Underverse, a perfect place for a new life. Riddick asks her if she's conscious, but Kira just walks away. Angered over what he did to Kira, Riddick throws a blade at the Lord Marshal. Seeing him fall, Dame urges Vako to act, but Vako waits. The Lord Marshal stands with the blade in his hand, unharmed. He manifests astral projection and strikes Riddick on all sides until Riddick is subdued. He approaches Riddick and pulls out his soul, but Riddick regains strength and attacks him. 
Lord Marshall arms himself with a spear and strikes until he has Riddick subdued again. Upon getting another spear, Lord Marshall chokes Riddick with it, but gets stabbed from behind by Kira. Lord Marshall stands up, then knocks Kira into a column of spikes that stabs her. Dame orders Vako to move while Lord Marshall is wounded. Vako approaches and is ordered to kill Riddick. When Vako swings his weapon at Lord Marshall, he manifests out of his body to evade but gets stabbed in the head by Riddick, leaving Vako to strike at nothing. Dame screams in despair as Irion smiles in satisfaction. Riddick holds the dying Kira until she takes her last breath. He then slumps onto the throne in grief while Vako and the remaining necromongers kneel in difference. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.